guys, welcome back to Candid Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't do a review for episode two last week because of some circumstances that came up. So now I'm just going to do a joint review of episode two and episode three because they kind of flow into each other over a certain character that was uh, revealed in the, at the end of episode two. So I'm just gonna do a joint review for you guys for two and three, just to catch up a bit. So last week's episode, episode two was titled The Variant and this week's title, episode three is called Lamentous. Now, what happens in episode two I like the episode better than the first one. I said this in my preview, if you guys wanna check that out as well. But this time I'm gonna go a bit more in depth. I found the pacing to be a bit better in episode two. And then what I really loved was that the dialogue was better between characters. We have Mobius and Loki speaking to each other majority of the episode and I really love their interactions. I love what they discuss. I love their discussion about the timelines and how the branches would work out and and even just about what a god truly is and everything that they've done up to this point and what's real, what's not, why is it real, why was it created. It's a very, very in-depth conversation that we had in episode two, which I loved. And I love that Mobius and Loki had better chemistry in the second episode. And I know what you're about to say, well, they have to set everything up in the first one. It's like, yeah, that's that's great. But sometimes there's instant chemistry. And I just found that in episode two, they kind of built upon that and it was a bit stronger. And if, you know, it just flowed a bit more. It was also funnier. The jokes landed and Tom Hiddleston just keeps getting better in every single episode. I love that there was also a discussion between Mobius and Ravonna Renslayer. They are alluding to another character that could possibly come in. Is she related to Kang the Conqueror? Are they gonna go that route? Are we gonna get a name drop? So that's something that I really enjoyed. It's like little tidbits, but it was also balanced with some action scenes again, which was awesome. So the structure of episode two, I was a really big fan of just because there was heavy dialogue when necessary and they gave us so much. They gave us so much development for both of those characters. So. I enjoyed that. And then the end of episode two, you know, they discussed a different variants, different timelines, different versions of Loki, different power sets for Loki in different timelines, which was awesome because you don't know who the hell's gonna pop up. And speaking of who the hell pops up, we have Lady Loki, or we think it's Lady Loki. I've been hearing Enchantress from other people on Movie Files Live. We actually spoke about episode two last Thursday, I'm gonna drop the link below. And Enchantress was brought up. So we don't know who it really is because she keeps the Denying that she's a Loki. Don't call me a Loki, don't call me a Loki. The only peeve again with episode two that I didn't really like at the end of this is that Loki fought Lady Loki, air quotes, with a vacuum. He has powers, she has powers. I would have really loved to kind of see that, but I guess maybe, maybe, just maybe, they're going to save that battle, if it's a battle, towards the end of the series, which makes complete sense because they just met. The structure and the pacing for episode two was much better than in the first episode. I didn't feel like it dragged on, you know, there were some like missteps, like the holding out for the hero song choice at the beginning of this, when I first heard it, I was like, that seems so out of place. Like they're throwing like a splash of Ragnarok in there. And I didn't think it really worked until I watched it the second time. And because I know that Lady Loki comes in at the end of episode two, that song choice at the beginning, I was, you know, I was happy with it made sense. And I actually had a big fat smile on my face when I watched it again, because it's like, yeah, you need a woman. You're holding out for a female hero. And that's what I was, you know, pretty happy about. So yeah, episode two, I gave a four out of five. I was on board. I was really happy with that. Whereas episode one, I did give it a three, three and a half out of five, just something, the pacing was off. I was very excited going into episode three. So now going into episode three titled Lamentous, I fell right back into what I was struggling with in episode one, where the pacing kind of fizzles. Uh, it's very inconsistent. The beginning of Lamentis, we see that Lady Loki goes to Hunter C20 and uses her enchanting powers on her. Again, 
in this episode specifically, for someone who's not calling herself Lady Loki, the word enchanting, enchantress, enchantment, all of that, the words were used multiple times in this episode. So it's kind of like, is it too on the nose that we're saying it's enchantress? Like you're dropping those little words in there for us. So is it a stretch? We don't know, but she's not going by Lady Loki. So it's very confusing, but there are key words that are used in speaking about her enchantment powers. So I do think I'm leaning towards more enchantress. I really want to give a shout out to Sofia Di Martino because she is killing it she's killing the role of lady loki enchantress of sylvie we have a name so i'm going to use sylvie so i just really love what she's doing she's embodying this character she's keeping it very ambiguous of who she is and and you could tell that there's so much hiding behind her eyes we start off with her speaking about in enchanting others and and getting hunter c20 and she finds the location of the timekeepers. In order to get to the timekeepers, there's this golden elevator in the TVA where there are guards. So the next step from episode two that links to episode three is that Lady Loki, Sylvie, heads into the TVA and attempts to go to the golden elevators to see the timekeepers. So in that moment, She's fighting the guards and all of that. She's finally able to get to the golden elevators. And Loki's like, nah, 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 what are you doing? Hold up, you're coming with me. We're not gonna do this. Uh, we can work together. We can try to figure things out. But obviously Sylvie does not trust that Loki. They fight, which I loved. <laughs> it was really good. And then Ravana Renslayer comes out of nowhere and is about to kind of end both of their lives and then Loki transports them to Lamentis 2077, that planet uh, with the Tempads. So they're on that planet, it's getting destroyed. They have X amount of time to get out of there. But here's the thing, in the race against time with the Tempad being low battery, then after an episode, it kind of breaks. It felt very slow. <laughs> It felt so slow. I did not feel the rush of like, we have to get out of here because there is another planet about to hit this moon or wherever the hell they were. So it was just, there wasn't that urgency of like, we have to get out of here. It just fell flat. So like there were moments where it's like, oh my God, we have to get out of here. And then it's like, they have very calm conversation for a long period of time. And then it's like, we need a plan to get out of here. And then it's like, long conversation and then it just the way it was structured i just wish it went differently i found it to be boring at times to be perfectly honest the one conversation that everyone's talking about it is my favorite conversation they explored loki's past with his mother they explored the origin of his magic and how he felt and then what the beauty of this is, is that he's building trust with Sylvie and that's what is important for Loki to do in order to work together with someone in I guess in order to get out of Lamentis 2077 you have to build that trust in order to go on this journey with someone and that's what he was doing he was speaking about his past his mother his magic his own trauma and they struck a chord in each other where they're both adopted where Loki didn't know he was adopted and Sylvie was adopted but she doesn't quite remember her mother so they bonded over that it's such a great conversation it's also Sophia's best acting I think that we've seen I know we've only seen it in one episode but she really grew in episode three and in that particular scene when Loki's having this conversation with her showing her the fireworks all, like coming out of his hand and like his magic she the camera's on her so when you're looking at her and Loki speaking she has a different thought process behind her eyes. It's like, yes, she's visually seeing what Loki's doing. There's a bit of like wonderment in her eyes. I feel like she's trying to hide a smile. She's trying to hide like her happiness. It's like someone else is kind of like her and she's 
she's feeling that connection to him, but she still has that hard exterior, you know? But the eyes, they never lie, my friends. They never lie. So that scene in particular, Sylvie saying that Loki is this prince from Asgard, I'm pretty sure there were women or even men that he was interested in and he answered a little bit of both. It was just a moment. It was a moment because we have never gotten that kind of confirmation about sexuality in the MCU. And to see that there is a bisexual Loki in the MCU was just, it was a moment in that conversation. And unfortunately it is on a television series, but it was just huge hearing that from Loki himself and having that conversation and it being so perfectly written in my eyes. Like it was just, it was very playful, but it, they were asking the right questions. And I love the way that they answered and their banter really made that conversation. One of my favorite pieces in the Loki series, that conversation piece is something that I will remember in the Loki series. Whereas the rest of the episode, I'm kind of like, I, I watched it this morning and like, I still, I couldn't tell you what, happened whatsoever except for that conversation because it just made me really happy it was awesome i love their chemistry their chemistry their banter going back and forth like that sylvie really stood her ground and, and she she was very stern and i love that and, and just the back talk back and forth I, I love you know how much i love banter we saw that in the falcon and the winter soldier and loki has that but i just wish that that level of back and forth that banter would carry through the entire episode because they're, they're, that's their strength at the moment is the banter between either Mobius and Loki or now Sylvie and Loki so that's what they needed to work on a bit more because that's the heart of it like that's what we love to see and we get more information the more that they talk to each other so I love that we got so much information in the first episode because of Mobius and Loki the second episode was like mind-blowing between Mobius and Loki and in this case we only got like a little bit more of information in episode three in regards to the TVA and who the variants actually are but at the end of this episode they're still stuck on Lamentus 2077. I just hope that the pacing is better in episode four. Where Loki is suffering is that there's not enough happening in an episode versus where Falcon and the Winter Soldier was overstuffed with like too many characters, too many storylines, like everything that was being set up, it was too much, it was over the top. Where Loki's like, we're really gonna go through an hour of an episode and try to build up these characters as best that we can. So I feel like there needs to be some sort of middle ground. And I know that Loki's really gonna affect the MCU as a whole, more so than Falcon and more so than WandaVision. I felt like WandaVision was more contained the entire series until the end where you know it's going to be connected to uh, Multiverse of Madness, where Loki, the branches, the sacred timeline, all of that, that connects to multiple things. And every little thing that happens in the show that's trying to be contained within the TVA, within Loki's world, I just feel like it's not enough. They're not building enough. And for six episodes, you're going to have to structure it better than they are pacing wise. I think it's just my peeve. There's not enough happening at, in the episode for me to be entertained by it. And there are certain points where I'm like, oh my God, it's getting better. And then it'll pull back again. And that's my issue with episode three, unfortunately. There's just something missing. I don't know what it is. I am entertained because of Loki, because of Tom Hiddleston. I wouldn't be watching the show if I didn't love him. There's something and I can't put my finger on it. I want to love it. I'm enjoying this more than WandaVision don't kill me but a lot of people are saying that i just there's something about loki that i'm waiting for the shooter drop i'm waiting for something big to happen and maybe it's not going to happen like i just feel like there was a drop in wandavision with the other vision and with agnes with agatha harkness we have falcon and the winter soldier him becoming cap we have the u.s agent we have power broker flag smashers we don't talk about but there were drops in those series. So with Loki, Lady Loki was introduced way too early if she was the drop. But 
it, it's not considered too early if they're going to reveal who she actually is at the end of this series. And it's like, okay, then that's who, that's who she is. But I do think that there's going to be a name drop. There has to be, there's too much talk about the timekeepers. There's things going on off screen with Renslayer. So there has to be something coming. I just want the episodes to move a bit faster because they're an hour. You can fit so much in there. I just, it's so slow for me. It's really slow. I do give episode three, another three out of five. It was enjoyable just because of that one scene between Sylvie and Loki and the banter between them throughout, but it's still just not working for me. I want a bit more. And that more that I'm talking about, I have no idea what it is, but it just needs to give me that same, you know, feeling that I had in certain episodes with WandaVision, in certain episodes, majority of all episodes, <laughs> with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So yeah, I just, I'm waiting for something else to happen in Loki. And I, I need it to be a bit more, you know, fast paced for my liking in these MCU shows. One last thing before I go, you may notice that I am wearing a Loki hat right here. Yes, you see that cap, that's right. So if you guys wanna go follow Stefano Bove underscore art on Instagram, he is a dear, dear friend. I write reviews for him for at first reviews as well. So go check out his Loki merchandise, go check out his Captain America merchandise if you're missing your Falcon and Winter Soldier go check that out on Instagram. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And you can always find me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'm always chatting about something and I always got your hot takes. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.